Hi guys, Professor Latimer here, the CC Mom Who Loves Science, and today I'm going to bring you CC Cycle 2 Week 5 Hands-On Science Experiments, and those are coming out of pages 8 and 9 in your Van Cleves Guide. So first one we're going to do is number 16, which is called In and Out, and then we're going to do number 13, which is Expanding. So number 16, In and Out. I'd recommend that one being a tutor demonstration. And if you can, maybe practice this one ahead of time. Um, I've already whacked myself in the head with the spoon a couple times, but make sure you kind of have plenty of space. And this would be a good, just a good one for the tutor uh, to demonstrate. So again, I like to have um, Nicole Liam's science scripts. You can find these on CC Connected. And she just gives some really good questions and some good definitions if you're not really sure what something means or just um, how to kind of get that discussion to go a little deeper. Um, but again, like I said, if, if you ever get stuck in any of these science experiments, just, just keep asking questions and just help the students just grow their curiosity. And that's really what we're trying to do with these science experiments is just to get them curious about the world around them, about God's creation. And so just keep asking questions, even if the experiment doesn't go the way you think it should or it turns out a different way it's just a really good opportunity to ask questions okay why did this happen would it happen differently um if we tried something different and kind of get their their thoughts on that their, their ideas so um so for this one we're going to talk about um why satellites stay in orbit why planets stay in orbit so one of the questions you might ask is what is an orbit and that's either like a circular or an elliptical path. Um, if for a planet, it's around our sun. So all the planets make an orbit around our sun. Um, the moon makes an orbit around the earth. We learned about satellites. They spin around the earth. And um, so there's forces that keep those planets going in a circle. And later on, we're going to learn about Newton's first law of motion, which is an object in motion likes to stay in motion um, unless it's acted on by an outside force. And that things like to move in a straight line unless they're acted on by an outside force. So why do the planets move in this elliptical orbit? What keeps them going around and around? Why don't they just go off into space? You know, they're moving quickly. Why don't they just move in a straight line through space past the sun? Um, what keeps them going around and around? So there's some forces at work and we've already talked a little bit about gravity um, And that just has to do with how much mass how much stuff um, You know the Sun is really large. It has a lot of mass It's made up of a lot of stuff and it has a lot of gravity and one of the cool illustrations in here she talks about okay think about if you're standing on a trampoline and say you know if a grown-up stood in the middle of a trampoline you know it would go down pretty far and if anything you know was on the outside edge you would want to roll in towards the center and so if you put something like a ball in the middle of the trampoline instead of the grown-up it has a lot less mass and it pushes down the trampoline less and um, the objects would not fall as quickly or it have to be closer to it so it's kind of um, how gravity works too like the more mass you have, the more stuff something's made out of, the more gravity there is. So the sun has a lot of gravity and it wants to pull things towards it. And so the planets are moving and if they're not moving fast enough, they would get pulled into the sun, but they're not. They're moving fast enough to keep going around, but they're not moving so fast that they just go off into space. So we're gonna talk about what is that force that keeps the planets kind of like attached by a string. It's not really a string, but that's what we're gonna demonstrate with our experiments. Like the force, it's like the sun's got a lasso around our planets and it's just keeping them moving around, but it's actually an invisible force. So to demonstrate that, you're going to need a metal spoon and some string and a roll of tape and a spool. So, um, I just went to the Dollar Tree and got one of these little sewing kits and used one of the little uh, thread spools from that. So this is what you're gonna to hold on to for the experiment. Um, so your spoon is gonna represent your planet 
and the weight of your tape is going to be like the mass of your stone. So we're kind of focusing on what is happening between the spool and the sprue. So you can ask them, you know, what's going to happen when I let go of the spoon? Um, is it going to, is it going to drop? Is it going to go this way? Um, what's going to happen? And so you can kind of demonstrate um, some things like that. You know, if I just let it go, then that planet moves whoop, right into my sun. But we're going to demonstrate that the, the speed of the planet and kind of balances out that gravity, that pull of gravity, and keeps the planet moving in an orbit. So what you're gonna do is, you're going to hold, to start off, you're gonna hold your tape, and you're gonna hold your spool in your other hand, and let it, um, let the string move freely through the spool. So we want the string to be able to move freely and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna start spinning the spoon around. And as it spins, you're gonna let go of the tape and see what happens. So I think I've got enough room, but I'm gonna start spinning the spoon. Okay, and now I'm gonna let go of the tape. And so if you can see, I'm just holding onto the spool. The spoon is spinning around, but it's not moving closer um, to the spoon, to the tape. So the, the speed of the spoon wants to pull it away, but the gravity, that weight that's pulling down wants to pull the spoon towards. So you can kind of balance the speed of your spoon and it'll kind of stay in one place. So it won't move closer or farther away. And you can kind of play with it. If it goes faster, you know, does it move closer to the sun or farther away from the sun? Just be careful not to hit yourself in the head with, with the spoon. I've done that already. But, so, that string, the string is pulling on the spoon. It's like our force, and it's called a centripetal force. And it's, um, let me look at the definition, an inward pull causing something to move in a circular path around the center. So in this case, we can see it with the string. But in the case of a force, we can't see it with our eyes, but we can see the results of it because the planet keeps moving around and around. So there's a pull towards the sun on the planet, but the planet is moving fast enough that it doesn't get sucked into the sun. It's moving fast enough that it just stays there, that it goes around and around. So the forces kind of balance each other. So centripetal force is your big vocabulary word um, for this one. And another interesting fact is that every object has its own gravity. So even something very small like this marker, it has its own gravity. But because it's so small, it's made of not a lot of stuff, not a lot of mass. Um, like my hand is not going to like be drawn like a magnet to it. Um, but if you think of something really large, like a moon or a planet or the sun, that is going to have that force of gravity that pulls something to it. Kind of like you're standing in the middle of a trampoline and things are kind of pulled to the center. So, and Nicole has kind of some um, diagrams that you can show too. And show, you know, if things are closer together, that pull of gravity is stronger. If things are farther away, then the pull of gravity is less. Okay, so that's number 16. Number 13 we're, is gonna be expanding. And it's gonna be talking about the expansion of the universe. So astronomers, they can look through telescopes and observe galaxies and observe where they are. And what they've observed is they're kind of getting farther apart. None of them are getting closer together. And so their theory is that the universe is expanding. And we're gonna do an experiment to kind of show um, what that is. So you can ask them questions. What is the universe? And she's got a good definition here. The universe contains all the stars, planets, and galaxies, and matter, even time and space. It's just like everything. It contains everything. And a galaxy is um, a group of stars. And she's got 
picture of a galaxy. This is a picture of what we think our Milky Way galaxy looks like and kind of where our solar system is. So there's so many of these galaxies out in space. And astronomers can see those with telescopes. And so, um, and they're kind of getting farther apart. So we're gonna um, do an experiment to show kind of what they think is happening. So you're gonna take a balloon and you're just gonna blow it up a little bit to like the size of an apple. Okay, and then you're gonna take your marker and you're gonna put some dots on it. These are gonna be our galaxies. We're gonna observe what is going to happen? Okay. We can get their hypothesis. What's going to happen to the dots to our galaxies when I put more air into the balloon? Are they going to get closer together? Are they going to get farther apart? We can get their hypothesis. Then you're going to blow up the balloon some more. So you can see like these right here, they got really far apart, but maybe the ones down here, they still got a little bit farther apart, but they weren't expanding as much. They weren't spreading apart as much. And that's what scientists have observed about the, the universe as well. Like there's some galaxies that are moving really quickly, moving apart really quickly. And there's some that are moving, still moving apart, but not as quickly. And so they think that um, the universe is kind of expanding like a balloon and you know as a balloon doesn't expand evenly in all areas neither does the universe and so um, Nicole has kind of some, dim some diagrams there too I'm going to air out of the balloon and make sure I didn't miss anything um, so it's just an interesting way to think about what's going on in our universe and get the students thinking about, okay, you know, does everything just stay the same? Is it, is its location, you know, where it is for forever? And no, it's, it's still changing and we're still observing that change. And so, um, and I think things are getting farther apart, which is really interesting to think about. So that is all I have for week five cycle two science experiments and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.